if you think big picture, you know, uh, about our healthcare system, it's really not a healthcare system, it's a sick care system, right? It's very much engaged upon when folks already get disease and, and treating them often uh, in expensive and difficult ways rather than sort of wellness care or prevention. Uh, and to put, you know, you as the center of your healthcare, the new drug is the engaged, empowered patient where you're the CEO of your own health. You own your data, and instead of walking into your doctor's office kind of guessing at these things, you'll maybe slide them your phone or your Fitbit and all those other pieces are going to come together. These give you dashboards into your health, right? There's this explosion of connected health technologies that you can buy and access and do things as simple as tracking your steps or your sleep. And now, of course, you can start to optimize that with your friends and family. And it's not just the consumerization, these are turning into medical devices, everything from tracking sleep and high fidelity, your blood pressure, scales that tweet your weight, uh, things that track your swimming, uh, bike riding, your posture. It's not any one technology, it's not just Moore's Law, it's 3D printing and social networks, Internet of Things and, and the app world that's converging. And a the, bit of the theme for the future of health and medicine is, is how do you take some of these, not often new, but super fast, cheap, small, powerful technologies that used to be, you know, a, you know, all the things in your phone used to be, I don't know, 200,000 or a million dollars worth of technology, the flip phone, the encyclopedia, the camera, the video, all those separately are converging uh, and layering up in new ways. And that's where you have the opportunity to disrupt any field, not just in healthcare. And it's part of this new era of connected, quantified self or quantified health. So we started out with Fitbits, those are consumerized, but we're moving to this era where, you know, our watches aren't just gonna be watches, uh, they, they, they have your heart rate detector on the bottom, right? And eventually that's gonna be sent to your doctor. It's a consumer device, but soon it might be FDA approved for, for tracking heart disease, or glucometers for tracking diabetics, or shirts to track your vital signs, or, or beyond, or pills on the lower left, that when you swallow will tell if you took your pill or not, which for some people is important to, to manage. Or toothbrushes that tell how much your kids have been brushing and not brushing, and you can gamify it. You know, no angry birds, or Minecraft until you brush your teeth, you know, that kind of stuff, and you can tell. So we're going from this world of of wearables to insidables. This is the Philips eye pill. This is lots of convergent exponential technologies. Camera, Bluetooth, this one's unused. You swallow it and uh, it, does, it replaces an upper endoscopy. What about optimizing your health, right? You're already healthy or you want to get healthier? Um, one area that has lots of room for improvement is our brains, right? All of our behaviors and elements, mind-body connection is powerful. This is a uh, off-the-shelf now $200 device called the Muse headset. You put this on. And um, it measures my brain waves when I'm not moving. And you can use it to tell you when you're focusing or not. So kids who have ADHD, for example, can learn to focus and the game goes. And when they're not wearing the headset, they stay more focused and they get off Ritalin, for example. How about diagnosis? There are other tools to optimize the clinician, right? So this is optimizing the doctor now. This is, I, I brought the head of Google Glass to my future med program like a year and a half ago before anybody had these. A bunch of doctors saw this. Two of them were the first to bring it in the operating room. They're building apps on these things. So, you know, you can see vital signs, you get data as a patient, you can help track your environment. This is going to be a powerful tool. And so these things are not, uh, these are part of the new digital doctor's bag. My favorite example being something like this. Uh, probably cost 10 bucks to make in China, being sold for 200 bucks. It's called the uh, LiveCore case. And I can open up the app here. This, what does this do? Does your EKG on your phone. So this is always good show and tell. So I don't even need to have this attached to the phone. I simply hold, hold the two leads, and now I'm doing a, a live EKG. Part of the new therapy is going to be telemedicine, right? We're not going to have to go to the doctor most of the time because you can now download one of many different apps, Doctors on Demand, MD Live, pay $20 and see a doctor right away. Now, soon those doctors will be connected to actual data from home, but right now it's basically a, telem a Skype type visit. But those are starting to get paid for by the payers. I think probably 50% of doctor visits will be telemedicine versions in the next five years. That's going to be disruptive. Um, robotics. Robotics is going to change therapy. Um, we're replacing, in some cases, the poor anesthesiologist with a robotic anesthesiologist. Or wearable robotics for the paralyzed, for example. Um, this is a, one of our Singularity University events with Exobionics, um, which I'm an advisor for. This woman is paralyzed from the waist down. She's wearing an exoskeleton and she can now walk, and parts of it are 3D printed to match her own anatomy, right? You can do a lot of crazy stuff with 3D printing. That's disrupting all sorts of fields, including medicine, from prosthetics to uh, orthopedics. Um, you know, imagine fracturing your arm and getting a cast that matches your exact anatomy, for example. It's printed right there uh, at the point of care. Or some new companies are developing hip implants or knee implants. The future of medicine is like a lot of things layered up together, like the empowered patient and consumer, 
dashboards of data from whether it's weather or your home or your wearables, crowdsourcing, there's companies like CrowdMed where you can crowdsource difficult diagnoses, the wearable sensors, all these omics that are exploding, um, integrated into what I like to think is like your own GPS, your own healthcare guidance. So hopefully we'll shift healthcare from being episodic and reactive to one that's much more continuous and proactive. We can all take part in that. You realize that you know, with some of these technologies, the future's already here, just not evenly distributed, but you can buy it online. And um, you know, part of my message when I talk to folks is that you know, it's not just enough to think about the future and predict it, but to go out there and uh, we can all go and create it together. So with that, thanks. It's a human vision, legacy we want to leave behind us.